Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're back. We're better than ever. My favorite day of the week, and I hope it's your favorite day of the week. Tuesday morning means another episode of the Brantley Dump Show. Maybe you're listening on Wednesday. Maybe you're listening on Thursday. It don't matter. As long as you're here, as long as you're listening, let's get right down to business. We're going to have Mikey Beardown Cuz joining us. We're going to have Joey Coldcuts joining us as well for their segment that have swept the podcast world. The numbers continue to increase. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Let's keep the ball rolling here. Before we get into any of that, you know the drill here. Buy or sell segment of the week. What did you like that you saw? What did you dislike that you saw? Is it a food? Is it an athlete? Who would you invest your stock in? Who would you not invest your stock in right now? Let's go dancing. I'd like to start with the man himself. The most swagger maybe the NFL has ever seen, Joe Burrow, and the Cincinnati Bengals are going to the Super Bowl, something that nobody saw coming. Joe Burrow coming off an ACL injury. In America, we love swagger. We do. We crave swagger. We're in awe of swagger. I love swagger. Joe Burrow walks the walk, and he talks the talk. This man has it. He absolutely has it. He dresses loud. He's taken over the internet. He's taken over memes. He's dressing loud. He's wearing fur coats. He's wearing sunglasses. Looks like he's walking into the Staples Center for game seven. And it's working. He dresses loud, but then he gets onto the microphone and he is cool, calm, and collected. He's a class act. He says all the right things. I think we're all fascinated with Joe Burrow right now. I, I really, really do. This man's stock could not be higher. And in, in the sports world, you always have people, regardless of who the athlete is, they're going to have haters. They're going to have the people who don't like them. You are going to, you'll be tough pressed to find the person out there that does not like Joe Burrow. He's very likable and an absolute stud. From an athletic perspective, if you asked me what your, Joe Burrow does that makes him so great, I don't know if I could put my finger on a specific skill set, whether it's his arm, his accuracy. I just think he has it. He really does. He sees the field well, and the guy knows how to win. It is fascinating to me that the Bengals are in the Super Bowl. Buy your stock in Joe Burrow. Something else that I am going to go ahead and buy is the 2022 Super Bowl halftime show. What a roster we have here. For this Super Bowl halftime show, we got Mary J. Blige, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. I've always said about the Super Bowl that every artist is willing to go out there and perform the Super Bowl because, from a publicity perspective, I mean, you don't get better than that. That's as good as PR as you can get right there performing at the Super Bowl halftime show. So, CBS, who or who's ever running the Super Bowl, could pick and choose who they want to perform. So why not give us multiple artists? I love Bruno Mars. I think Bruno Mars is an entertainer and I think he's spectacular. I think he did a really good job in the last Super Bowl halftime show, or maybe it was the weekend. Fuck it. I like him too, but why not give us multiple artists with all these artists willing to do the Super Bowl? It's exactly what they did here. I think it's going to be a phenomenal show. Um, hell of a roster Buy your stock in the Super Bowl halftime show. And then something that I am going to sell um, this is a food. This is a vegetable. I would like to go ahead and sell peas. Yeah, I said it, sell peas. Look, as a kid, we always, we were prone to dislike and hate vegetables. Our parents made us eat them. They were never enticing. We never got excited about vegetables. And as I've grown older, I've learned to love vegetables. And partly because these vegetables have innovated. Look what Brussels sprouts has done. Some people like Brussels sprouts in their salad now. You put a little balsamic on there. You could have it as an appetizer. Brussels sprouts are now spectacular. I've learned to love Brussels sprouts. Cauliflower. You got the bang bang cauliflower, which always hits. I'll have cauliflower straight up. I'll have it as a side. I love asparagus now. I've learned to love these vegetables because they have innovated and they've gone beyond just a side. Peas, however is not a side. It's not an appetizer. And the problem that I have with peas is they just sneak up on you on your meal. Unannounced. You'll be cutting into your chicken and a pea just comes in and scares the shit out of you. Surprise me with movies. 
surprise me with TV show plots. Don't surprise me with food. That's what peas did. That's what they do. They don't want to be picked up by a fork. You have to use an additional utensil to pick up the peas. They don't innovate. And don't even talk to me about split pea soup because nobody really gives a flying shit about split pea soup. It don't look good. It don't taste good. You're not going to have a whole lot of people out there scratching and clawing to defend split pea soup. I just find peas to be able to just latch on to entrees unannounced. They are okay with just clinging on, being a groupie to a bigger, more powerful food, and they just nestle their way in that food and pop up unannounced, and I'm sick and tired of it. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you here on the Burnley Dumb Show today, sell your stock in peas. They stink. Anywho, as promised, we now bring on the segment that really, really is just ramping this show right on up. Mikey Bear Down, Cuz, Joey Cold Cuts, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. We're just going to flow. That's what we do. Let's bring in the boys. This is another edition. We're rocking and rolling here. The Brilliant Dump Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt the Brilliant Dump Show to remind you. That the Brilliant Dump Show is brought to you by our good friends over at Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens to get a little spark to my day. I wanted to be clean. I wanted natural energy from natural vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods. They got vitamins, whether it's their drinks that you could consume. It is truly unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Athletic Greens gets me in the mindset that I need to be in. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third party testing. Your subscription comes Comes with a yearly supply of vitamin D, which is also important to add in these winter months when we don't get as much sunlight. Ladies and gentlemen, take it from Bobby himself. Get yourself athletic greens. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with the convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. To make it easy, easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash dumb. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash dumb to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Folks, let me remind you that the Brilliant Dumb Show is brought to you by Paint Your Life. We're back making new memories in a new world. I found the best way to hold on to these memories is by turning them into art that lasts forever from paintyourlife.com. Get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price or combine photos of people or places you love into one painting. Choose from a team of world-class artists and and work with them every day until your portrait is perfect. User-friendly platform makes it easy to order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's fast and you can receive your portrait in as little as two weeks. At paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed, and right now as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get the special offer, text the word DUMB, that's D-U-M-B, to 64000. 64,000. That's DUMB to 64,000. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates may apply. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text DUMB to 64,000. In the meantime, we are Moving on. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Yeah, look at Katsi ready to rock and roll. Good for you, Joseph. And there he is, Sir Mikey Villani, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't know, his, he's a Bears fan. You do now. He's got the Bears sweatshirt. He's got the Bears hat backed up by the entire Bears cave. Bear down. Check in with us. Good day to be alive. Good day to be alive. Good day to be above ground. I tell That's you, sure. he is. Katsi, am I wrong? But I think... I think the Stairmaster got the best of Mikey V today. I think Mikey V looks a little bit drained right now. 
No, 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 no. No, I think he looks very and- relaxed. Very relaxed. Uh, quite honestly, I'm in just in such a good headspace lately. Been doing a little yoga, a little meditating on top of the normal exercise regimen. I just feel fantastic. And what are we? What are we, What are you drinking? A white Russian? It's a white Russian. Got a little little vodka, little vodka Kahlua. This guy you, gets the Packers espresso. offensive coordinator, and he's drinking white Russians in the middle of the day. I mean, you, you, middle of the day cuts. It's fucking eight o'clock p.m. where I am, pal. That's number do, one. And I, number two, number two. Oh, I don't want to hear about already. how you don't like how you don't like the Packers offensive coordinator hire. And you say that this guy couldn't call his way out of a paper bag. First of all, he was like third in the pecking order and play calling over there. Secondly, we know Aaron Rodgers controls everything when it comes to that offense. He does what Aaron wants to do. We all know that. We got let this guy come over here. Let's, let's just have a shot. Let's just let's, give him a shot. Let's, we, I mean, we, if uh, he can we, do it with fucking Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, I mean, now, good luck. Now, here, see, here's the thing to me, okay? And, of course, we got fireworks right out of the gate. The only thing that I will say is, uh, I mean, again, we talked about it before, Joe, that when, when Bear Down got, when the Bears got their, their coach, that, that's a big impact on Bear Down's life. It's a big impact. He's a no, no name coach, to be completely honest. Well, I mean, I, I hope he's a no, he's a no name, but I just, he's a no name to a casual fan. He's a no name. I know his name very well. Yeah. There's a lot of better candidates out there. Okay. Like who Joe, but besides Brian Dayball, who Brian Flores. Yeah, Flores would be a great coach. Why? Why isn't Flores why hired? Either. Why is Flores not hired yet by anybody? I don't know. And quite frankly, Miami was they were idiots mm. to get rid of him. But but Joseph, why 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 the I mean, Bear Down's riding a bit of a high. He's got his new coach. Because he and has to do this. this you message you do. message the Gamblers Digest, and you said you said for Bear Down to pipe down and not be so excited <laughs> about the coach. Because the guy's a nobody. Meanwhile, Bear Down sipping on his white Russian. He's got himself. No, no, Bob. I mean, I I state what I feel. I take it with a grain of salt. We know that. What what I did say is, and Bear Down, you can be, you can attest to this. I said the GM hire was a great hire. Did I not? No, you did. You did. I I I did. And I think it's a great hire. And I like him. He's got pizzazz. He's got a lot of, you know, he brings a lot to the table. But quite frankly, the coach is, is left to, there's a lot left to be seen. And and bear downs, you know, doing a live saying that this is our coach, and this. And I understand this, you got to rally behind him, but he he really has shown nothing to be that excited about. I, I'm going to tell you what he has shown to be excited about, Joe. And I'm going to sum it up very short, succinct, complete, and 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 very well for you. Okay, he took the 30th ranked defense in the NFL, and in one year's time, turned them into a top 10 unit. He ran that unit four years straight. They were in the top 10 in defense. He's got a no nonsense. Unfortunately for you guys, your problem isn't defense. I it's understand. offense. I understand that, but he brings a complete no nonsense attitude with him. In addition to being a player's coach, which is a complete opposite of that ass clown that wanted to be everybody's best friend and had absolutely no vision. I listened to this man speak today. He's got a clear vision. <laughs> I, I'm very excited about it. Nobody knows what he's going to do. He could be great. He could be terrible. Nobody knows because he's never taken a single game as a head coach. So we will we will pause it there. We'll move on to a different topic, but let's just give the man a chance. That's all I'm asking for is to give him a chance. I am ready to give him a chance. I loved what I heard today. I love his demeanor. I loved his vision statement. Complete polar opposite of Matteo freak show, clown show, Nagy. What, what do you, if I had to ask you, Baron, what do you say your record is next year? Oh, Joe, it's a little early for that, Joe. I, I need to get through free agency in the draft first, then we could talk record predictions. But do you think, like, out of the gate, you guys are going to be competent, like you'll be a 500 team? Oh, they're going to they're gonna compete next year. They'll compete. They'll compete. Can we um, – I, I do want to tell there was a fade jet movement um, Sunday. Oh. Cold cuts – cold cuts actually – cold cuts pulled the move – and we're really hard on bear on um on cold cuts uh, gamblers etiquette. And I I will say I gotta commend Cutsy. I actually think Cutsy made a really really respectable play Sunday during the game. Spare down, Chiefs were playing and they were just steamrolling the Bengals. Okay, yep. Yep. Jet was just cold as ice all day oh, the night yeah. before. Jet, our producer, just absolutely <laughs> he's next to me right now throwing oh, a fit shit. but but he was cold as ice he really was he could and the thing that's up is me and Cutsy were there winning and he was going with different games and he just he couldn't win so at halftime 
Jet loves the Bengals. The Bengals were plus three, I believe, at halftime. So Jet's nice. trying to, to rally the troops and get us to do a party bet for the second half. Nice. But Cutsy's looking at me and he's saying, you know, there's no way. I mean, even you said, Pay Down, that the Chiefs were going to roll them yeah, by yeah, 30 yeah. and a half. They were rolling them, yep. So Cold Cut sends a message to me and while Jet's trying to rally us for the Bengals, and he said, I'm fading the Jet. I'm rolling with the Chiefs second half. Cutsy puts in his bet for the second half. He lets Jet ride with the Bengals. I rode with the Jet just to, you know, get in the mix Good with for him. You. Good for and you. you know what he did? During the second half, he never showed. He didn't announce that he was he was rooting for the Chiefs. He didn't That's announce that he had a bet. He didn't when when something good happened for the Chiefs. He didn't get out of line. He just sat and he just watched and he ended up losing. But we're very hard on cold cuts with the gamblers etiquette. And I will say, Cutsy, I respect that play. I mean, yeah, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna announce that I was against him. I wanted him, you know, I, I wanted him to do well. But you know. I, he he was bared on. He had missed every single pick <laughs> in the first half, and 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 not to toot my own horn, I'd been. Very, by the way, I'm looking at McDonald's. They have this new surf and turf. Have you guys seen how disgusting this looks? I of did. It's disgusting. It's, it's a fillet of fish mixed <laughs> with a fucking quarter pounder. I don't get it. I, surf I, and turf. I don't that's, get it. What are we doing that's here, a, McDonald's? That's, that's what this organization's doing. They're uh, I don't want to. No, we're gonna it's it's just, no. It's I'm just hard. saying. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm saying though that that looks. Have you guys seen that? No, it's it's terrible. Terrible. Well, here's the problem. Desperate. You have. They're desperate. They they watch the top surf five, and turf. Desperate. Here's the problem you have. What sauce do you go on with that? Oh, I'm, I think they put both. Oh, I hope not. That's but I will disgusting. say, though, you know, I will say a lot of times it seems disgusting and it ends up working. Bear down. Not that I'm going to. How much would it take for me to pay you to try one of those sandwiches? I would not. I have a thing. With, with fast, <laughs> no, I have a thing with fish at fast food restaurants. Like, I oh, just no, like, I love the filet fish. <laughs> You know, Joe, you're, you're it's you're a good a sandwich. You're you're a restaurant tour and you're going to publicly admit you love the fillet of not I just mean, like you love the fillet. I grew fish. up on the fillet of fish because oh, on Friday, that's a bad look. Can man. I finish what I have to say, Bob, before <laughs> you, know, you have to chime in? If, if you want to grow up on something, grow up on the big Mac. I'm saying oh, Bob, your, mo- your mom's meatballs. Oh, yeah. your mom's of meatballs. course, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying on the filet of fish. Can I defend myself for one Absolutely. second? Here? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm saying this is that my mom and dad are very religious on Fridays. They didn't used to like to eat meat. Can you shut up oh, Bob, for right, a second? Right, oh, holy shit. Cuts go. Cuts, Good go. God. I can't get a word in. My mom and dad are, are religious. So growing up on Fridays, you know, the Italian Roman Catholic bear down. You probably know this. You don't eat meat. It's, it's you eat fish or seafood or whatnot. So we didn't normally Fish go to seafood. Very, very similar. But yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yep. but my, what my point is, is that we normally didn't go to McDonald's. But if we ever did, if it was on a Friday, we wouldn't get a burger because it was Friday. So we'd get a filet of fish. And, and, and to be quite honest, I, I think they are a good sandwich. So when I say it was, I grew up on, I didn't mean I was having them weekly, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying that, you know, I probably had more of them than the average American or Canadian or whatever you want to say. Okay. 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 I'm already being judged. You no, know, I think I'm not I judging. Know, I, I, I know. No, it's a surprise think, to me, Joe. Can yeah. I be surprised? I'm I just think the line, the line. I grew up on the fillet of fish. It's a great yeah, it's line. Not a, it's not a good <laughs> great <laughs> line. No, it's a <laughs> great. I disagree. I think it's a great line. Bob, have, have you ever tried a fillet of fish? I have not. Uh, you know what, dude? So, so you're you're bombing it, and you never even had a single sandwich. I have not had a. Fillet that of fish. is a terrible look for you, Bob. Bear down. Have you had the fillet of fish? I'm sure he's tried it. Yeah, I've tried it. It's, it's not for me. Okay, and then and you know what? I can handle that, Bear Down, because you've tried it. But mm. King Midas over there, you know, is sitting on his throne of you know t- of accusations and judgment, never even tried the sandwich Midas. before. The wrong. I, it's the wrong. Cutsy, what would you say? That's the god who, uh, when he touches everything, it turns to gold. Cutsy. Yeah, it's, it was the wrong reference. I know it was the wrong. When cuts touches anything, it turns into a play of fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I grew up on filet of fish cuts. Is honestly, you've had some one liners in your time. And that's the top five. If we did a top five <laughs> cutting one liners, I grew up on the filet of fish is probably in the top two or three. It has to be. It's unreal in a good way, cuts. 
That's content yeah, yeah. right there. You know what I'm thinking? That's a clip. That's a clip right there. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a clip. Thing. I'm going to get yeah. murdered for that now, the Bob. The Jet is probably already clipping that up. He's oh, probably already putting it on the Brilliantly Dumb Show podcast yeah. page. What would you What would you say is probably, and then I do want to get into the um, the whole The Rock thing, because I think that definitely needs to be touched on for sure. That's too good not to touch on. But what would you say is the worst fast food invention? The worst, because there's been a lot, and I will actually would start it off. Remember when KFC did kfc was scrambling absolutely scrambling to come up with something people were coming out with different chicken sandwiches kfc it was their turn to make their move and what they came out with kentucky fried chicken was a donut sandwich this is pretty recently too donut on the top donut on the bottom donut chicken, chicken in a piece of chicken in the middle right. and I, I that to me was one of the worst Fast donut. I adventure. remember they did two things of chicken as the bread. As the bread, I remember that. That too. was that's, fucking yeah. unbelievable. No, no, <laughs> that's, but... that's definitely <laughs> something that's that's more feasible. But it's remember, innovative. But you don't yeah. remember the yeah. donut? Thing? This is this is. Very, I don't remember the donut thing. Very though. recently, it's already I, gone. I remember the sandwich cuts is talking about, and I think they had to literally, I think they had to remove it off the menu because of how unhealthy it was. Yeah, the calories like, were like fucking 3,000. It was for the outrageous. Sandwich. Like it was like three days worth of calories in one sandwich. <laughs> it was insane. It was insane. It was very innovative though, Bear Down. Yeah, it was absolutely a pioneer move by KFC. <laughs> now the donut, I've seen the donut play on like as the burger buns before. I've seen that in some restaurants where it's like, the heart attack <laughs> burger or whatever, where it's like a burger on, on like a donut, like a fried donut instead of bread. I've never had one. I'm sure it's not horrible, but I don't know about chicken. I think that's a bizarre thing to put between donuts. Worst fast food invention for me, and this is how you know I'm not on the Burger King payroll. The most unappetizing thing that I've ever seen is that Halloween Whopper when they put it on the black bun. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just like looks squidding. So <laughs> yeah. It looks, yeah. yeah, like, yeah, like it just looks terrible. The optics of it are just so bad. Now, I've never had one, but I, I would never want one. It looks like the bread was sitting out since 1794, just laying in the back somewhere. Yeah. Hard, hard. Bad play. Bad play. I would say the, the, the Jack in the Box tacos are dog shit. Oh, the mini tacos? Yeah, the taquitos or whatever. Oh, like, yeah. This is, a, this is a prime example of a company that doesn't know wh what they want to do or what yeah. direction they have. You're right. You're adding taquitos and you're not a, a – like, I mean, what, I, what are we doing here? I mean, it's – The problem with Jack in the Box, Jack in the Box is the problem that I have with Cheesecake Factory. There's too much going on. There's too much menu items, especially for – a fast food place. I just think across the board, there's just there's just way, way, way too much going on. But then the other place you said they don't have enough going on, right? Yeah, the Bob, chicken, Bob's a hard chicken, person the, to please. The chicken, tend, the, Whoa, chicken, but, the chicken tender joint. But that's raising raising canes. canes, raising that, canes yeah, yeah. that because they solely go with chicken. And you know right. what? There's a lot of raising canes fans out there because I took a, I took a bit of a beating for that. Yeah, I took a big too. beating. I, I still I took haven't a seen one. Obviously, we don't have them. Anymore. Now, here's what I want to talk about too. And I've been busting Mikey V's balls for some time about this. Okay, and then this could lead into the rock story. And I know Bear Down's going to hold his ground on this, but the last top five came out. We have another top five coming today. I think it's a very good top five as well. The last top five came out. I was a resounding winner, no question about it. That gives me three. That gives Joey Coldcuts two winners on the top fives, and it gives Bear Down zero. <laughs> and Bear Down continues to take the stance <laughs> that he doesn't mind that he doesn't have one victory. It's not he a good look. He why continues to say, "Why, Joe? Because I'm comfortable in my own skin." I mean, just because you <laughs> cheer for the you? Bears and you're used to losing doesn't you? mean that you should oh, not want to win the top five. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, Bob? You see what I I'm mean, saying, just because you Lindsay. settle for for me, you know, for for not love, winners, yeah, doesn't love, mean that you should not you should not strive to win the top five. I strive to give a list that resonates with a particular audience of people that may not oh, be as confident. God. The to voice and the voiceless. That's that's. Correct, Joe. That's by the absolutely way, correct. if we want to talk, and by the wanna... way, I got quite a few people supporting my list last week. Bob, you'd have to say that. I we did have a, get quite well, a few. We have a lot of fans. Of course, you're going to have some people support you. Of course. <laughs> I think <laughs> people actually support me, though. I really do. And I think you, do. you know how, am I wrong, Cutsy? We know how competitive Mikey V is. You saw when the Jake He's Paul extremely competitive. Up. He's ready to fight Jake Paul. 
He's on the Peloton. He gives his Peloton numbers. He's trying to beat Brian Erlacher on. The it's Peloton. part of what I love most about him is Me how competitive is he, how but he is. For Mikey V to sit here week in week out as he continues to lose the top fives and say that he doesn't care is <laughs> totally outrageous. And You're not deceiving all, anybody. I agree. I'm not, I'm not trying to deceive you guys. Are my and by friends. the way, I my, don't, I don't off. deceive my friends. I don't want to deceive. My <laughs> friends. This is a friendly competition. And yes, it's a competition. OK. And perhaps according to the statistics uh, delivered by, you know, Bob's independent party of, of staff grabbers uh, and analytics, I have not registered a W and and I'm perfectly fine with it because I still think that I get large numbers of support. I probably have a lot of number two finishes. Unfortunately, if you're not, you know, you're not first, you're last. I understand that. Uh, but I am very comfortable where I am very comfortable, but I have, I've never been more comfortable. I am a total inner peace. I really am. I really am. Well, then Bear down should just omit his top five since he's not going to win anytime soon. <laughs> we, uh, and this guy, this guy is just throwing coming, dig after yeah, dig, and yeah, I'm not coming is, after him. Is, I'm really, really aggressive not. today. It's okay. It's really it's fine. I gave you multiple compliments in the last just, five minutes. What? Where are those? I gave you multiple compliments. What? Com- I said Bear Down's competitive is what I love about him the most. You know, what a compliment. Okay. It is right. a compliment. Well, speaking by of the way, five. Bob, if you if you want to if you want to really like look at the nitty gritty, oh, um, the, the baked potato was That's... the most talked about item of all the items, and had I not chosen baked. steak at one, I believe I would have won again. Could you could you back up from the mic just a little bit? That a baby, Bob. There you go. There because there there are some people saying that your mic is popping. That it that it that, I'll just tell Jet that, to bring down the volume level. That That's, microphone, that microphone is the size of a garbage can. That thing, it is so <laughs> humongous, Joe. It's huge. It's huge. It's the size of your torso. It covers your entire torso. It's amazing. All right, all right. Amazing. Well, let's let's. I want to get I into like that it. story because we we gave you a little bit of our time. And to me and Bear Down's defense, we did totally retract our statement on the last top five that we have that we had, it was most trusted foods, foods that you could get anywhere and you're confident that it's gonna be good. Cold cut said baked potato. We immediately laughed because we were caught off guard by the baked potato selection, okay? We retracted the baked potato selection. We put out the graphic for the top five. Some people were very hard on you about the top five. And what happens to you the other night, Giuseppe? Well, I mean, I told you guys, uh... Well, I was at work and I found out that uh, Dwayne Johnson, aka Michelin, The Rock, oh, right. Michelin Star Restaurant. Yeah, of yeah, course, Michelin Star plug, Restaurant, plug, one of the top plug, restaurants plug. in LA um, that I happen to run. And um, <laughs> well, I'm not the GM; I'm the AGM. I would make that very clear, but still run the restaurant. Uh, so we get news from the assistant that uh, Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, is planning on coming in for dinner. Uh, we have to set up the whole space, and then last minute he calls and he has to cancel because the baby's ornery or something like that he so canceled? he still says he still says i want to have all my food to go he puts in an order for almost six or seven hundred dollars worth of food to go and the first thing that he requested and chef had to prepare personally was a baked potato and i can't make this stuff up i could bring in my executive chef drew rosenberg if you don't believe me and all the and, pictures I sent the pictures, they had all the fixings, everything. And this is a man who is at the top of Hollywood. Okay. He is a man who a, he, 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 he fucking runs LA. I'm sure he's had more cuisine and more top, you know, end selection meals than anyone we know. And he also cherishes his diet and his body. And he went with the baked potato. So it just goes to show that it overall is such an, it's such an, excellent option for me to put in my top fives i and i i really it was like a sign from god just lifted to showcase i'll I'll say this if you're gonna have anybody that happened to to support the food that you just selected if there's one person that you're gonna have behind you to fill that story in top three guys the rock i mean yep I didn't realize he canceled and didn't come in though, Joe. That's absurd. well. He we ended up. He said, "I'm sorry, the baby is acting up." So he came into valet with the with the Escalade, and we just we we gave the food to him. And um, I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Otherwise, I would have congratulated him on the baked potato selection. But <laughs> but uh, apparently, he was very pleased. You know, <laughs> it's funny now because Cussie's working at this restaurant, and it's such a just a high end place. It really is. I mean, you feel it when you go out there. 
there's there's fans that are coming in now and requesting Joey Cold Cuts for him to go around and take a picture. This guy's taking more pictures than Wolfgang right now. Yeah, I'm on a bit of a roll there, Bear Down. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it really is. Speaking of rolling right in, you know what he did today, which is just unbelievable <coughs> to me, and, and this will check out. Cutsy now is really becoming a part of the Bob does sports team. And something that's really big for him is, is he's getting into the group chat now. So the bigger guys of the Bob does sports team said, let's get Cutsy into the group chat. And I was like, Oh, good. That's great. So they let him know, Hey, we're going to throw you into the group chat. And these guys are, they're great, but they're also, they're all business. So the group chat's very business-like. Um, we add Cutsy. They, we tell Cutsy we're adding him. I text him once they add him and say, Cutsy, this is the Bob the sports team. Cutsy responds into the group chat. Who is this? Who is this? So that's you how never he starts. told me that you're adding me to the group chat. I text oh, I, wake, I, I wake up, Bear Down, to a text with 10 people in it who I don't know. I just see the jet and I see Robbie in it. And I see fair. a bunch of unknown numbers. That's fair, And Bob. they said, we add, and I'll tell you exactly what was said. It wasn't like... Hey, Cutsy, this is, you know, Bob does sports. But it gets worse, Barry. It get, he it, came in like an absolute wrecking ball, okay? He says hi to each person in the group chat, so he fires about 10 messages right out of the gate. But here's, here's where it gets interesting, okay? One of the guys, the merch guy, introduces himself. Cold Cuts responds. He goes, hey, Brett, I'll be needing a bucket hat. That's how he... That's how that's how he he came in to the group chat. And I called the jet and I said, are you seeing cold cuts right now? And Jet goes, this is cuts. This is what you're going to just came in like an absolute wrecking ball. But how about that? Hey, Brett, I'll be needing a bucket hat. And you know what it reminds me of, Mikey B? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the Klondike situation where he messaged Klondike because he wanted his free Klondike bars. He wanted his free ice cream and his merch. And he went right in for the kill without any regard. Unapologetic. I don't know how many times we could say it. This is this is what he does. What he does. <laughs> I can't he find does. the group chat. I don't yeah. know if I got well, uh, taken probably, out of it. I mean, I'm trying you, to find it. I can't you, find it on my mean, phone. Would you be would you, isn't that just but but by the way, Bear Down, they just said we're ju- we're adding cuts aboard the ship. I'm I'm like I'm literally waking up. It's the first thing. Am my eyes open? The first thing I do is hold the phone. I don't know who this. So I said, "Who is this?" As if that that's a, and when they said it's oh this is Bob does sports. I said, "Oh oh, how's everybody doing today?" And then I start being nice to all the people. And the one girl, Sophia, said, "Sophia, have a great Monday. Joe, Hope Monday Joe, your her weekend was great." Her name is not Sophia. It's Victoria. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I can't find the chat. I don't know. Oh. I think I got removed or something here. I can't find it, Bob. Victorian Sophia is not even close. Cuts. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, here it is. I said, hi, who is this? They said, this is the DTM times BDS chat, which still I go, oh, hey, boys, what's happening? And then they start They go, this is Reed. I say, Reed, what's up, brother? Then Victoria, Victoria, top of the morning to you. And then this guy goes, hey, Joe, this is Brett. I'm the merch guy. I'll be handling the Bob Does Sports merch. So I says, I said, Bob, Brett, I'll be needing a bucket hat. Laugh out loud. Nice to meet you. And then he responded, just get me an address, my man, and sizes. I'll send you a care package. I responded, I'm just wow. kidding, my guy. Truly nice to meet you. The people behind the scenes making this thing special. So you know what? I had a little character to it. I don't want to be all, you know, this shouldn't be like, a, you know, in in a cubicle chat, you know, where it's all business-like. It's, you know, have a little fun with it. Yeah, a little fun a little with personality. It. That's what I, makes me cold cuts. I, yeah, yeah. But I just thought you came in very, very hot. And you're right. That is, I mean, that is classic cold cuts. That's what we love about you. And I know these people like me, so I, I've, I, I, you know, I, I'm just being me. I'm not going to be any different. I like how you whipped out all the repertoire of all the different ways you could greet somebody in the morning. Yeah, yeah good morning. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, <laughs> top of the morning. Today. It's like he's walking through the ran hall. Ran the whole gamut. <laughs> ran the whole gamut of hellos. And Bob was mortified. Meanwhile, I'll bear down. Jet goes, I've been begging for merch since day one. <laughs> <laughs> we can't make the Jet a fucking oh, bucket hat, Bob. Jet, Jet, how much Poor stuff? Jet. The amount of work that Jet does, Bob, that's you fucking, can't get him a bucket if That's true. Hey, that's fucking They're disgusting. busting my balls right now. About this the guy does more for the brand, and we can't get oh, him a bucket God. hat. He's, they're busting my balls that you don't have a, a Bobby Locks. That he doesn't have any merch. I, I don't, that's not on you. That's, that's 
how much how much robot <laughs> stuff? Oh, oh, how much do you think or you jet better i tell you you hate you know, you, you know what he said he said i'm in the clear and i agree okay. i'm absolutely Absolutely in the clear. I'm just saying, if the guy says I've been waiting for a merch drop, you know, for a while. Okay, let's get into our top five. <laughs> I think nice, this, easy segue for Bob. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the perfect yeah, time yeah. for a segue. Um, it's top five. It's a good top five. We all. By the way, it. before sorry, Bob, to interject, but just to just to just to make something noticed for the followers, Bob wanted to do a completely different top five bear down, and I think he wanted to like almost rig the top five to his advantage so that he would win it and this top five that it was bear down selection i think if i may is one of the best top fives that we've put in of all time and bob you are going to struggle mightily on this one and it's going to be very very evident (laughs) bob was not a fan of it and i just want to say bear down it was a fantastic selection bear down and and i think bear down i think it's going to become down between you and me and i think you may get your first win this week it's possible it's neither here nor there cuts we're all we're all we're all god's children <laughs> oh god first off i wanted to do top five jewish people i wanted to do top now, five. we were gonna say yeah, to your advantage top, now you just ruined it top five jewish people Bob. okay and you know what maybe that does gear up to me maybe that does the the reason that i have my back against the wall here <laughs> I mean, it should. It's a, that's like me saying, let's do the top five Chicago Bears of all time. Yeah, it's right up your wheelhouse, Bear. Right, right. right. Okay, so here, here's the top five today. We are going to have top five best TV shows of all time. And yeah, I'll be the first time. My back's against the wall right out of the gate. I haven't well, seen The Sopranos, so I know it's going to be one or two for you guys. <laughs> so my back's already against the wall. I can't use that. So I might not have even watched five shows in his entire lifetime. Should I? Can I, can I give my top five? Yes, can yes, I give yes, it yes. Rugrats. Rugrats is going to be his top five. <laughs> Sesame Street. <laughs> Doug. Doug is a good oh. show. Doug's a good show. You ready? You guys done? Can I give my top five now? Yes, yes, you can. Here's going to be my top five. I kind of put them in array. I didn't put them in order, but I'm going to go ahead and order it for you guys now. Um, what I'm going to do for five, and I may get a little bit bashed for this. I don't think that I should, because if you watched it, it really is an incredible show. Um, okay. Number five, I'm going to go with Dexter. Okay. All right. All right. Number five, I'm going to go with Dexter. I think Dexter was a phenomenal show. Had me hooked the whole way. It's tough to hook me the whole way. Um, and it did. I haven't seen the new one that they just came out with. I'm very against doing too many seasons because then it just seems to water it down unless you really do it right. Um, I'm going to go with Dexter at five. Number four, I'd like to go with True Detective season one. Mikey V, we brought that up the other day. True Detective season one, Matthew McConaughey, not season two, not the True Detective package. Give me True Detective season one at four. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I love that play, Bob, if we were saying top five seasons of television shows, because it would 100% be in my top it's, five. It's a total different okay, 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 thing, okay. though. You know, it's a total... I, like, you're talking to the wrong person, because I love... Tr- True Detective Season 1, by my estimation, is arguably the best season of television I've ever seen in any show. Different plots, different characters. Yes, yes. Um, True Detective Season 1 at four. Um, number three... I'm going to go with Entourage. Entourage to me, absolute classic, never seems to get old. It just keeps running. Um, Entourage, give me that at three. Number two, give me Seinfeld. I'd like to do Seinfeld at number two. Absolute classic. Larry David, Jerry Seinfeld, unbelievable. And then number one, a show that just took the world by storm, holds so much weight to it. I don't think... I'm going to get questioned here. They turned it into the movie. I don't know if the movie's any good. The show is very good. Breaking Bad at number one. You didn't even watch the whole show. The what whole are you seasons? talking oh, about? I did. Boy. The, what are you, what are you getting that from? You didn't watch all the seasons, Bob. I've talked to you about this. That's, that's a fraud true. of a pick. That's not true. I've watched the entire wow. thing. That's a heavy. The only thing that I, the only thing that I had not seen was the movie, the Camino movie. I had no interest in seeing that. I already it was, saw it. It was all right. Show. It was all right. Yeah, and I heard it was negative. I, so it was like, I, right. I, I recall. Unless you went back in in the last little recent history, which which I don't think 
happened. I recall having a conversation with you where you didn't finish all of Breaking Bad. So, Bob, I really hope this isn't the case that you're just choosing this because it's a popular choice. But I, unless and if I'm wrong, you can say it if you came back and watched in recent times. But bear down, I promise you, we had this discussion and he never had finished the entirety no, of the show. Joseph, where you're missing it is the movie. What I said to you, I had no interest in the movie. I had a couple people tell me that it was okay. Know, I don't want to take two hours of my day for something that's going to be okay. I have seen the show. I think the show's phenomenal. And now with that- How does it I end? Oh, boy. How does the show, how does the season end? What happens at the very end? I'll to tell Walter you. White. Walter White dies at the end. How? <laughs> this is so sick. This is so Bear down, sick. I'm sorry. I'm telling you, Bear down, we had this conversation. Cuts is running a fucking uh, Jesse, SAT. Jesse, <laughs> Jesse, they were holding Jesse Pinkman hostage, I believe, from what I remember. They were holding him hostage, and I think Walter White went to go get him, and, and he ends up getting killed. And Jesse Pinkman lives. Uh, all right. Is that not how it ends? I mean, there's so much more. I, I, I told you that's how it ends. I ends. hope I'm wrong, Bear, Bear Down. I really do. I hope I'm wrong, and I will give Bob the benefit of the doubt. I just definitely recall having a conversation where he did not finish the show. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I'll, I'll, I'll take it with a grain of salt. You are where you're getting that from again is the movie we discussed. I remember having the conversation with you. Is the movie I got Breaking Bad at one? Joey Cold Cuts. We head on over to you. You're in the hot seat. Well, there's no hot seat to be had here because this is a phenomenal list. Um, and I even have a couple backups for honorable mention if you want to go there. One honorable, um, one honorable. Joseph. Uh -huh. I'm going to start at number five with a show that really I think took on a whole persona and changed the way that we you know, view fantasy, the way that we view different genres. I think it just changed the whole landscape, had people talking, was not crazy about the way it finished, but it was phenomenal. Is Game of Thrones yes. for years yes. was just an incredible. And now you have to put the time in bear down with this show, yes. which I can guarantee you, Bob has not. It, it starts out a little slow with the, with the first season. There's so many names you got to kind of pick up, but it's just, seasons. there's so many fucking epic moments that yes. just would leave you. And every time they finished a season, it was like, God, I can't wait till the next one came out. So number five, I've got game of Thrones. Okay. Number four, I got a TV show that I truly believe is just like the benchmark of shows that you could go back and watch time and time and time and time again. It's always on TV. So many good lines, so many good characters is the office. I think Steve Carell is phenomenal in it. It's very funny. I think there's so many good plots and points and twists and turns. And, and there's a lot of seasons. I will say that. Um, but it is, it is a benchmark of what good television is office at number four, number three, I'm going to do breaking bad. I, I, have watched this show in entirety plus the movie How does it and end? i've also watched better call Saul, <laughs> which is a spin off of it walter white is one of the most interesting uh, you know developments of characters coming from the the uh, protagonist to becoming the antagonist meanwhile you're still rooting for him all the while um there, it's phenomenal writing vince gilligan is a mastermind breaking bad at number three and number two is a show bob has not watched Bear Down, you and I, I'm, it's a benchmark of television. It is truly the first series I ever really got into. And I think it incorporates comedy, drama, um, so many more different elements within it. It is, it is one of my all-time favorites. It's The Sopranos. It is just so well-written. The characters are so well-developed. It is just a show that I, I've rewatched the series twice or three times now, Bear Down. It just get it never gets old. It's phenomenal. And then at number one, I got Seinfeld. Um, I think Seinfeld is just revolutionary, a show about nothing that does so well that it's just it, it, it's just as good as it gets. I love the humor. I can watch one episode just, you know, out of, you know, before bed, or I could watch a whole slew of episodes in a season, you know, in a day when I'm off, I, I think it's as good as it gets. So that's my five to one, really hard to find any kink in the chain there. I think, I think I, I'll tell you this, I think I'm in trouble. I think with game of Thrones that people love, I've never seen it, but with, with people love that the office, I mean, wow. 
Yeah, that, that's that's a dynamite list. We got to call spade a spade. That's tough to beat. Tough to beat. Bear down. We head on over to you. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's the early spoiler. Myself and Joey Colcutts have one differential pick. Wow. That's it. One. This one differential come. pick. Okay. And, and the order the order is slightly different. But other than that, me and Joey are pretty much right on the same page. Number five, Breaking Bad. Number five for me is Breaking Bad. Uh, an epic, epic story with this guy who obviously develops, you know, a life ending disease potentially. And, and just his transformation from goofball chemistry teacher to drug pin mastermind. Just incredible. Like Cut said, character, character development. Uh, you won't find any better really anywhere by my estimation. Breaking Bad number five. Number four is the pick that Cuts didn't have, and it's the change from The Office for me. Number four for me is an HBO show. Uh, I thought it was absolutely incredible and doesn't get enough credit See, in top is- shows of all time. It's The Wire. I think The Wire is one of the greatest shows ever made. I have not uh, seen that. Yeah, I, I love The Wire. I think, it, Joe, if you haven't seen it, you would love it. Um, do yourself a favor and watch it. You would you would love it. The I Wire. have heard from people who've watched it. They say it's very, very good. I've it's had awesome. a couple people recommend awesome. it to me. It's awesome. The Wire is great. Number three for me, <coughs> excuse me, is another HBO, the epic fantasy that is Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, it didn't end the way. I, people were very disappointed in the ending. I personally like some mm. moments from the ending. I thought that the White Walker uh, invasion on the north, that last battle at Castle Black should have taken place. Or was that a Castle Black? No, it was at uh, at Winterfell. Winterfell. That last that there was it at Castle Black. I can't remember right now. That last battle with the White Walkers. I think that should have been the final episode where the Night King is finally destroyed. Other than that, um, I thought the show, the first four or five seasons, were as perfect of television as you could possibly produce. And cuts, you were right. At the end of every season, you were just begging, begging for more. And it was becoming such a production scale that it took them so long to release the new seasons. It was just agonizing to wait. Game of Thrones three, number two, Seinfeld. Seinfeld is a timeless, timeless classic. Every time it's on TV, I don't care what episode it is. Mm-hmm. The soup Nazi, the Frogger, uh, the rye bread. Every the marine s- biologist. Every single episode is just, it's, you could just rewatch it. The characters, jo- every character is incredible. George, Jerry, Kramer, Elaine, Newman. Even the secondary characters like Putty and all the, I mean, the, the characters are just great. And that's the genius that is Larry David. That's the genius that is Larry David. And then number one to me, and I'll sum it up with this quote from Brian Cranston, who played Walter White in Breaking Bad. As good as Breaking Bad was, and he said, when James Gandolfini died, there would be no Walter White without Tony Soprano. The Sopranos set the press for that type of drama series on TV, push the limits to what you could put on TV and see on TV. The Sopranos to me is, is the quintessential perfect show. Again, a lot of controversy, the way it ended, people didn't like it. I don't think there was a perfect way you could have ended that show. I, I just don't see how you could have done it. The movie was an abomination pretty much in comparison to the series. Um, however, the series itself, especially the first four seasons were... <laughs> They were as good as good gets, and especially me coming from North Jersey, growing up in North Jersey, just so many identifiable uh, moments in that show in terms of locations, characters, the way people speak. I mean, so it resonates a little bit closer to me, but Sopranos at number one. Here's what I think it's going to come down to. I mean, I'm, I, I think I'm a long shot. I'll be the first to tell you that I'm a big time. Long shot. <laughs> You've no um, shot. I, I think I, 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 I'm big trouble here. I think what it's going to come down to is Joey Colcutt putting in the office and Mikey V putting in the wire. I think that's, I think that's really, really what it's going to come down to. Um, gentlemen, honorable mentions. I'd like to start off before I get laughed at. I happen to love the show and I'm going to say it with, with, with pride. I, I think it's incredible. I watch it all the time. Friday Night Lights. I loved okay. Friday Night Lights, the TV show. Um, what's the girl's name from that that Deborah Jeter dated? Minka Kelly. Oh, am I the biggest Minka <laughs> Kelly fan out there? Um, and she's part of the Derek Jeter roster. I just absolutely love the show. Tim Reagan's whole nine yards. That's my honorable mention. Gutsy, over to you. I have like a 1A, 1B kind of honorable mention. Um, the first one is Narcos. Um, I think it's really well developed show and it's 
is really neat to, 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 I think it's informative and, and really well, well done to learn about Pablo Escobar. And then the, the second one is, um, you guys will laugh at this, but is South Park. I think South Park South Park's a is show. a show that is breaks the boundaries between, you know, the amount of political influence they put in the show and the, the writing is so well done. Um, and it's, it's enjoyable to watch even as an adult, it's, yeah. it's very well done. So those would be my two honorable mentions. Um, Bear down anything from you. Yeah, I have two also. And uh, one actually is an animated series. And it's along those lines as well. I think it's absolutely genius. The references within the show are my favorite part. Family Guy Family to guy. me is an absolutely unbelievably intelligent, like comedic genius show. I, I, I think it's genius. I always take and people fight me on it. It's it's not many people prefer. I, I like Family Guy over South Park. I always have. I don't know. Really? I love. Yeah, Family guy. and a lot of I people, a lot of people guy. fight me on it because the South Park hardos they they're really all for that. I've just always been a been a Family Guy guy. And then my one B, the other one cuts would have to be, and it's a nostalgic pick for me. But I just think like Seinfeld kind of. And the entire show takes place in one location is Cheers. I love Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Cheers was a great show, man. Like I, the characters in Cheers are just, uh, I love that show. Great show. I, I tell you what, what Baird, it, it shows, you know, the, the TV knowledge between you and me is, is really, really respectable. And I'll, I'll say this right now. I'll have no problems if, if Bear Down wins this week. I really don't. Because it's a solid list from top to bottom. I have not seen The Wire, but I've heard very good things. And, and at the end of the day, I think, I think you know, Bear Down, you, you have a very good shot. It's going to be a interesting. Really shot. I can tell you one thing. No matter what happens, I'll be at peace. <laughs> I so doubt that. If you don't think he's going to be scrolling those comments. He's looking as soon as the YouTube oh, goes up. He's looking at no, all the comments. If we know our Bear Down the way we do, he is going to be on the prowl. His world will stop when that graphic comes out. <laughs> see who wins. Oh. All right, boys. I love you. I appreciate you. That is another episode here of the Brilliant Up Show. My, Mikey V, Joey Cold Cuts. Uh, the reason we're laughing is Cold Cuts just went on a tangent about somebody that we had to cut out. Um, and it seems to be every single episode that this happens. And this is why um, we really don't like to cut anything here, but it had to be cut because you can't go on rants about people on air. I'm raw, Bob. What you see is what you get. All right. Well, that is for I'm like an sure. onion. <laughs> you can eat them raw or cooked. <laughs> can I close down the show? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that does it. Mikey Bear Down Cuz, Joey Cold Cuts. Take care, boys.